G'day and welcome to another creative photography tutorial. I'm Hayley, the founder of Creative Photo Folk, and this week I'll be showing you some cool creative ways to play with torn paper in Photoshop. Now, most of the torn paper tutorials you'll find on YouTube use stock to create the effect but I prefer to use all my own photos. So to do that, I first went hunting around my house for different types of paper and card and tore these into various shapes that I figured I could use later. But this was a mistake, so please don't do this because the photos I ended up with didn't really work for what I wanted. So before you prepare your paper, I want you to really think about what concept you wish to create first and then only tear your paper to suit that idea. I'll show you a few variations today that will give you some inspiration. The first version we're going to create is this really simple one, where we have a photo peeking through a torn crack. For this, I used white card because it creates nicer tears than paper, and then just carefully tore out a triangle shape, making sure to tear slowly and move my hand as I tore, to create waves rather than straight lines. Once you've torn a shape you're happy with, you'll want to photograph it. So make sure you're in a well-lit area where your paper has even light across it, because shadows will be problematic to work with. Although this may be something you want to think about if your original image has strong shadows, because it will help with realism if the light matches in both images. As usual, I shot on my patio under shade, but I was positioned very close to sunlight. To make it a lot easier to create selections in Photoshop, I suggest placing some black card or paper underneath the torn area to create some contrast. To shoot this, I used a 50 millimeter lens because when I've shot paper previously using a wide angle lens, it created too much distortion as you'll see in this tutorial. So I found my prime 50 millimeter lens, reduced this issue, but still let me get close enough to fit all of the subject in. You'll need to shoot from directly overhead and fill your frame with your paper as much as you can. The settings I used were around 1 1 25th of a second, F8 and ISO 400. That shutter speed was lower than I usually like to go, especially for shooting overhead, which can be a bit shaky. So I had to make sure I held very still and took lots of shots just to make sure I had something usable. With our tear over in Lightroom, I've just brought that straight into Photoshop with photo, edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop. You can use control E if you like shortcuts. And then as a test, I just brought in a photo I'd taken totally at random, which just happened to be of these mountains in New Zealand. And so you can open them separately in Photoshop and then copy and paste it into your main document. So now it's over here. I first have to unlock my background, which is my tear, and then I can drag this below it. Next thing I did is just went to Control or Command T, which brings up our transform tools. And now I just made it a little bit larger to get rid of all those bits I didn't want on the side and pulled it down. So it was sort of central and that's looking pretty good about there. And then hit my tick when I was happy. And then what I did is went to my blend modes and went to lighter color. And because we shot with that black underneath, it just drops that black out. And now we've got our tear without it. But there is a problem here in that because we've used a lighter blend mode, the things that are still light from the layer below are showing through. Lighter color takes the lightest parts of the image and drops everything else. But when the bits of the image below are light, then we have an issue. So the way to fix this is you can add an adjustment layer. I'm gonna use levels, but you can use any adjustment that will affect the exposure. Then I'm going to clip that levels layer to the paper layer so it's not affecting the layer underneath. And we can do that by hitting this box here or by holding Alt or Option and clicking between those two layers. And then I'm going to bring in the highlights just to make this brighter than the background. But even doing that, we've still got this little issue here. So to fix that, what I did is added a layer mask to that landscape layer. So I highlighted it press the add layer mask button, which is the rectangle with a hole. And then with my brush tool loaded with B, it's this one here, I made sure black was selected as my swatch and I just painted away 
that part of the image. So it's now it's no longer a problem. And so if I turn off that paper layer, you'll see that I have painted out some of the layer below just to fix that issue. Now we could be happy with this. This could be enough. But if you look at my original, I actually added a shadow in and it sort of doesn't make sense. I guess it would if this was a picture instead of a real landscape that we were looking through some paper at. But I just like it. So let me show you it without it and with it. I just think it works a bit better, but totally up to you. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to make it regardless. So in this case, what I did was highlighted my tear layer using my magic wand tool, which should be the fourth on your toolbar. I've got a new computer and realized that my tools aren't grouped like they used to be. So I have to be careful about talking about them now. But what you want to do is hold down that icon and find the magic wand tool. And then I'm going to click in what would presumably be that black space. Now it has selected this section and what we want it to select is the white section. So I'm going to invert that selection with select inverse. So now the white section is selected and I'm then going to add a new layer with my new layer button. It's come in clipped. We don't want that. I'm just going to pull it down underneath the tear layer and I'm going to go to edit, fill, and then with contents, I'm going to make sure black is selected and hit OK. Now we can't see that, but if I turn that tear layer off, now we've got a layer where there is just a black section. I'm going to press Ctrl Command D to deselect and turning back that layer on, you'll now see we've got a little bit of a black ridge, which we don't like, but we will now go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And then we're going to move this until we get kind of a show that we like the look of. So about there. And then I can drag down the, that opacity if I think it's too strong. And so if you want to add a shadow, that's your option there. But back on our original, I then decided to get a little bit fancy. And I thought I'd really like to add something more to give this another layer of storytelling. So I actually added this bird that I got from another image and carefully cut out. I'm not going to show you how to do that because that's not the point of this tutorial. But I found I didn't really like the bird anyway. So I then added a picture of myself, cut myself out added that shadow exactly like I just showed you how to do and positioned her so she was looking into the gap. And then I just did a little bit of toning to make her and the background and the paper all sort of work together a bit better. Totally up to you if you want to go that extra step. Next, we'll be creating this version where we have eyes peeking through a hole. So you'll need to make a tear in the middle of your paper. Now, I initially tore lots of holes into one piece of paper, but found these were a bit too difficult to use without including the full sheet of paper as well. So instead, it was much easier when I first figured out which portrait image I wanted to use and then created my tear specifically to match it. So knowing that eyes are usually one third from the top of an image, I created my tear one third from the top of my piece of paper and then tore out the rough width and thickness I needed to work with for this image. To do this, I made a hole with a pair of scissors and then got my thumb and other fingers right in the hole, which meant I was able to tear out a thicker strip. Then at the end, just keep that curl attached and roll it up because we'll be keeping that in the image. You'll wanna use a narrower aperture for this. So the curl is a little bit more in focus. And I also chose to photograph this using some fill light from a torch so that the curl created a soft shadow that separated it from the rest of the paper. So the portrait started out roughly looking like this. I think it actually was shot against a black background initially. Yep. And I just thought it looked a bit gross. So I tidied it up and made it white. So I made sure that image was open in Photoshop. Then I chose the tear image that I wanted to use, which is this one. So I tore it out and then kept that little bit of a curl. So again, I brought that into Photoshop with photo, edit in Photoshop. I'm going to unlock it and then I'm going to control command C or control command V to bring it over to our main image. So with it in this document, we're going to pull down the opacity of it a little bit so we can see through it and then drag it into the position we want. Uh, I'm going to make mine a little bit smaller, I think, just kind of aligns with his head a little bit better. That's probably pretty good right there. And then I'll press the tick when done and I'll bring that opacity back up. And we're going to make a selection of this hole by loading our magic wand tool fourth down on the toolbar, holding it down, grabbing magic wand and clicking. Now, if yours doesn't do a good selection at first, you can press Control or Command D and play with the tool's tolerance. You might want to bring it higher and that does a good job. And then I'm going to add a layer mask with this little rectangle with a hole. And so this is what we have now. But 
it's brought in the black and not the white, which is not what we want. So I will highlight that layer mask and press Control Command I. So now we can see our person through our little gap. Next, I'm going to highlight the portrait layer, the bottom layer, and press Control or Command J to make a copy of it. And then I'm going to drag this up over the top of the little tail layer. And then I'm going to change that um, blend mode where it says normal here to multiply. So now we have the person coming through and the person on the bit of paper. Now his skin is looking a bit weird because that multiply effect is also affecting that bottom layer through this hole. So to fix that, what we're going to do is highlight that layer mask on the paper layer. We're going to hold down Alt or Option and we're going to drag it to the top layer. And what that does is make a copy of that mask and then we can let Alt or Option go. And now his skin is looking a bit more normal. So now we have this. Now the problem I'm seeing is that this little curl is behind his head and we want it in front. Just turn off your top layer. And then I will go to my object selection tool, which is the same place as the magic wand, but just in a different position. And I'll select it and I'm just going to drag over the curl and, and tap once to see if it will select it, which is, it has. But I also want to include this little bit here. So I'm just going to hold down shift, drag around it and see if it will add to that selection. See if that's what I want. I don't want this bit too, actually. So let me try and include extra bits. Yeah, that looks how I want it. And then I will make sure that top layer is highlighted, make sure the layer mask is highlighted, and then I'm going to go to Edit, Fill, make sure that contents is black, and hit OK. And now we've got our curl over top. So this might be enough for you, but let's do a few more cool things. First things first, um, just to create a little bit of a cool illusion, we're going to highlight that bottom layer. And then I'm going to go to my adjustment layers and add a black and white adjustment. And that will make his eyes go black and white and keep the rest of him in color, which I don't mind. Or the other thing you could do is the opposite. You could drag it up, clip it by holding that Alt or Option to our main layer. And then we have the opposite effect. So that's one option that you could do. I think I preferred that version. You can add that drop shadow like we added before. So I will press Control or Command on the layer mask to reload that selection. Make a new layer. Go to Edit Fill with Black. So that now we've got this bit that's all black. And we'll go to Filter, Blur, Calcium Blur. And that's too much. So we can do a bit of that. If we want a little bit of shadow, drag it down to make it a bit more subtle. There is another way of creating a shadow using drop shadow. You may be aware of it. I just didn't like it. So you may be happy with this image, but I wanted to play. So what I then did is opened an entirely different image. So I'm going to turn off that black and white version. And instead, I opened this image here. Totally different shot using UV lighting, something I teach inside my course Photo Fanatics. But I'm going to bring it across into the working document. And what I'll do is press Control or Command T and I'm going to rotate her eyes. So you, you rotate by dragging your cursor outside and it turns into a little double arrow. And then pull them into position so they kind of look like his eyes. But a little bit weird. So maybe about there. So you could do something like that too, just for something different. Then I was playing around and I actually changed the blend mode of this layer by accident to color. And that was a really cool look. It just took the colors from her image and then put them across his. So I really, really liked that. I think that's better than the black and white just for something a bit different. So that's something you could try. So I created this version, which still needs a little bit of work, but I was still, still just playing around. And so I actually used a different image here. So that is what that looked like. And basically what I did is just, I tore a bit of cardboard in half and then I just used a little bit, let's zoom in so you can see, just use this little bit of tear. So that works really well. So when you shoot it, I basically just got an A4 piece of paper and ripped it in half and then put that black card behind it to photograph it. And so we had our original image as before. Then I brought across this image. So let's work on it together. And I selected with my one magic wand tool, the black half. That looks good, I'll just grab this little bit here. So what I did is went to my lasso tool, hold down shift and dragged around the bits that I didn't want. 
And then I added a layer mask to that. So it dropped it out. Now I'm going to highlight that layer mask and control or command I to invert it. And now I want to get rid of this white part. So this time so I went for the object selection and I've dragged it over this area and it's, it's actually selected the white bit, which is what I want. But we're going to have to do some cleanup work. So I've just gone back to my lasso tool, shortcut L, and then I'm holding down Alt or Option to remove that bit. So this is a little bit of, of an advanced selection one. So I wouldn't really go here unless you're kind of cool with selections. And then highlighting my layer mask again, I'm going to go to select inverse because I want everything but that side selected. And then I'm going to go, because we've already got a layer mask, I can't then add another one on top. So I'm just going to go to edit, fill with black. And now we've got that little tear in the middle. Then all I did is highlighted my subject layer, added a black and white adjustment to it, flipped it on, but now it's affected everything and we only want it affecting one side. So then all I basically did is got my brush tool, so shortcut B, made sure black was in my swatch and I just painted it away. I just made my brush quite small when I got to the edges, making sure that I only kept the one side. There's probably other ways to do this with your selection tools. So that's essentially what I did. And then I put in a new background and that's how I created that. His hair needs a little bit of cleaning up, but otherwise you get the idea. And I did the same again, but I split the image in half like I'd torn it totally. I won't go into that because it's going to be too long for this video. I just want to really give you some options of what you can do using this method if you've got a bit more advanced Photoshop skills. The next version I did was this one. Now, it's pretty weird, I've got to admit. But basically, I took a photo of some card and card tears up really, really cool. And then just selected out the same way we've been doing before with a magic wand tool, just selected out that bit. So basically, I had my bit of card and then my portrait. And then I brought in the landscape, which looked like this, dragged it into position. And then I just reloaded the selection of that card by control clicking it and basically added it to the landscape layer, inverted it with control command I, and then just masked away using a black brush everything that was on the other side of that card. Again, just showing you some options that you could play with. And so that's it for this variation, but let's get into our last one. Finally, I created this Christmas themed self portrait to give you some ideas of other fun things you can do with this technique. For this, I had to shoot two different components. The first was the two strips of Christmas paper. Now, ideally, you want to tear your paper in a way that creates that white seam. But if you're tearing your paper in half, then only one side will have that seam. So this gives me an opportunity to show you how to fix this with our next trick. For that, we're going to need to tear out one thickish strip of paper from white card. And you may need to weigh down the ends again to photograph it as flat as possible so the light doesn't cause any shadows. I took this little self-portrait of myself at Christmas. I do have lots of family photos, but I didn't want to include my family members, so I just decided to use this image. To show you what you could do using this technique to, you know, you could do Christmas images using Christmas paper, you could use bits of paper with words on it to start, you know, creating these cool little collages. But I really liked doing a themed one. So let me show you how I created this one. We basically shot our Christmas paper and I grabbed this one here, I think, and brought it across. Then again, I made a selection of the paper like I've shown you previously. So in this case, I'm just using that object selection tool, hovering over it and clicking once to tell Photoshop to select it. Now, what I do is put them on separate layers this time. So in this case, with it selected, I press Control Command J to make a copy so that that's just on its own layer. And then I turned it off and did the same with the bottom part, copy it on its own layer, and then we'll get rid of that other layer we had. Now, one thing that I stuffed up here is that we got a kind of a white edge on one side, but not on the other. And that's because I just didn't, wasn't really thinking when I, when I tore it. But it gives us a great opportunity for me to show you how to fix this. So let's just bring across our main image. And then I am going to, making sure the layer I want to work with is highlighted, pressing Control or Command T, and I can rotate it into position. And you can kind of make these bigger if you like. You bet you do sort of want the pattern to match. So if you make one bigger, you probably need to make the other one bigger too. I get rid of this edge because it's going to mess with us later. So what I'll do is reload that selection by pressing Control or Command on that layer. And then I'm going to select Modify Contract. I might use 20. Hit OK. And that's 
Cool. I think we've got rid of most of that now. And then I'll add a layer mask to that. Let's just take a look. That's looking good. Okay. So we're going to create that white edge. Now, this is going to be very advanced, so I'm going to do it pretty quick. But what I did is now went back to all my shots and I grabbed this one here. So that's what it looked like. I had to hold it down with a bit of a weight just to get it to sit flat. But what I want to do is kind of grab this big, thick, white, teary bit. So we'll bring that over to Photoshop. And so what we're going to do is make a torn paper brush. First, we'll need to unlock that layer. Control, Command, T. And then I can just crop out anything that I don't want in the image, move it into position. That is looking good. So I'm just going to add a levels layer. And we're going to make sure that we can get that paper as wide as we can without it overexposing. And I'll do the same with the other sliders. I'll try and make that black as black as possible. That's looking pretty good. And then what we'll need to do is highlight both layers by control or clicking the bottom layer, right clicking and hit merge layers. Then we're going to go to edit, define brush preset. Now in this case, it is grayed out. And I think that's because brushes have to be a particular size and this image is too large. So we'll first go to image size. I'm gonna change the largest edge to 2500 because I think that's the largest a brush can go and hit okay. Then we're going to press Control or Command I to invert it so black becomes white and white becomes black. You don't always need to do this step, but we will need to, and this will be dependent on each brush. You'll just need to test it. Then we're going to make a selection of it with the selection, the object selection tool. It's not doing a great job at the moment, so with rectangle loaded as my mode, I'm just going to draw around that section. Great, and then we can go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. We'll give it a name, Torn Paper Brush. Hit OK. And now let's test it. So now we've got this great torn paper brush, but you don't need to do this step. I just want to show you what it looks like. So I'm just going to add a solid color. You might like to test yours first, and then we'll add another layer on top, making sure white is our color. We can stamp, and there is our brush. Beautiful. So back on this image, we want white as our color because paper is white. And then we're going to start stamping in those white edges. So now we're going to work on the right side first. We're going to add a blank layer. I'm going to pull that blank layer below this layer. And then we can rotate our brush by hitting this little icon here with a paintbrush on a folder. We can move this to rotate our brush a little bit. And then I can just stamp here. And we'll zoom in and take a look at that. That looks like real paper. How cool is that? So cool. Now we're going to do the same on the other side, but because only one side of this brush has the tear, the other one didn't have the kind of teary bit, then we're going to need to flip the brush so that we can get that torn bit on both sides. So to do that, we will go back into that little brush thing. We're going to flip it this way now. Now remember to add a new layout now for this one. We, we could use that same layer. I don't want to. I want to do it in a separate layer, again, underneath that layer. Making sure white is our color, stamp in little sections. So that's really cool, I, but I do just want to show you one more thing. If I grab my brush and stamp it over something I've already stamped, it just makes it yucky. Like it makes it go totally white and you lose the interesting ridge. So you want to try not to stamp over areas you've already done. So it can be a little bit fiddly to get it right, but this is how you do this technique. And I just want to show you that again, compare, like it's just not as interesting without the white tears, doesn't look as realistic. So I think adding those tears really gives it something. And so that's why I wanted to teach you that version as well. And now you know how to make brushes. I just want to quickly show you how to get out of this brush, because if you don't know, you're stuck with it forever. But what you're going to do is you're going to go up here to this little section here, click the drop down, and then slide this right up to the top where you've got general brushes and you'll click your soft round, which is your usual default brush, and then you've got it back. Best part about shooting all the stock yourself is now you can sell these. You could sell your torn paper brush, or you could sell your Christmas paper stock, or you could sell your torn paper stock. So I just always want you to be thinking about commercial ways that you can also use your creations. And there you go, several different ways you can use a torn paper effect for more creative photos. Can you think of some other ways that you can use these shapes in your images? If you've enjoyed this video, please let me know with a thumbs up. And I hope you'll subscribe to learn even more fun ways you can get creative with your images. Until we meet again, happy creating.